Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, it's been another banner day for intelligent discourse on the internet. How are you? Are we on the are we on the same internet? Are we on different internets? Are you on the World Wide Web? Because that's where I am. I'm on I'm on Twitter.com. My impression is like that's like Oxford University for the internet. It's that's my that's my impression. Which is weird because then I go on BuckeyeScoop.com and I'm like, wow, people seem much smarter here. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe 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 it's me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, Tom, Twitter is Oxford if we're referring to Oxford, Mississippi. Ox Oxford, but without the commas. Yeah, it's yes. it's like, uh, yeah. It, this is this has not been an outstanding day for logic, reason, or discourse. Put it that way. So let, let's talk about what has happened. And I would have to, I would need a cheat sheet to remember it all. The last time we talked to people, the Michigan game had been canceled, and we're like, well, Ohio State's going to look for an opponent. The Big Ten's going to try to find them an opponent. That did not happen. Big Ten uh, was unable to find them a willing participant. And uh, before that, the Big Ten rescinded their longstanding rule about having to play at least six games during the season to qualify for the Big Ten championship game, which uh, you could have, you, subscribers to BuckeyeScoop.com would have learned that a week ago tomorrow that that was going to be changed. So just an FYI, if you're interested in subscribing, you would have known that the Big Ten was headed this way back then. And so Ohio State, Big Ten East champs, Tom, congratulations to them. I am a little upset, though, because my dream scenario would have been they don't change the rule. Indiana cannot play in the Big Ten championship game because of COVID issues, so they have to bow out. And so the Big Ten East champ comes down to the winner of Michigan State and Penn State, unless Michigan State wins and also Rutgers wins, in which case I believe Rutgers becomes the Big Ten East champs and goes to a Big Ten championship game before Michigan. And Tom, that's juicy. That that is juicy. I had not even gamed that whole scenario out. I just kind of tossed something out at earlier about the fact that you know to win Michigan State could have been in line to go to the Big Ten championship game under the current scenario if Indiana can't play due due to COVID, which is which seems like a legitimate possibility because they just had to cancel their Purdue game, and as we've said, many teams that have had to cancel one have had to cancel two. Most teams, in fact, so. Indiana in the Big Ten championship game is a little dicey regardless, but man, I, I didn't, I had not gamed that all the way out to uh, Rutgers, Rutgers championship game. And if there is one result that this league in this year deserves, it is Rutgers Northwestern in the Big Ten championship game. I, I, I think I told somebody on, on Twitter that Fox would have relegated this to like FS2. You know, <laughs> FS2 runoff because there was some you know, skeet shooting tournament or something on that they couldn't they couldn't uh, intervene on. And so, yes, the Big Ten has avoided that dream scenario. And instead, Ohio State and Northwestern will meet. I saw, oh, I forget which national writer said it. Oh, Peter Burns from ESPN. So he's not a national writer. He's a Texan writer. He's a Texas ESPN college football person saying that it's not fair that Ohio State gets a bye week and that they should cancel. Northwestern should cancel their game this week against Illinois to give them a bye week. To which I, I quote tweeted and said, were, were you going to call for the cancellation of Northwestern's game had the rule not been changed? And Indiana is off this week getting a, a bye week before their championship game where you were you very concerned about Northwestern being unfairly treated at that point? And of course, you know, there will be no response to that. And it is fun to watch the, the anger, the upset people on your, your Twitter.com app there, Tom, about anytime the Big Ten does something for Ohio State, 
even though this was the most logical and uh, the really only thing the Big Ten could have done. And if they hadn't, then like I said, you're looking at Penn State, Michigan State, or Rutgers most likely in that Big Ten championship game. And sure, sure, it would have been fun, but nobody would be watching. Well, you made this point that all the people who are laughing and pointing at this and saying what an injustice it is would have also been laughing and pointing at the Big Ten had they not done this and had either COVID racked Indiana or Michigan State or Rutgers. Like, I mean, that's not none of those are no, none of those are desirable outcomes for anyone involved. And the other issue with that is the whole premise of that tweet. I'm going to I'm just going to read the whole thing right now. Big Ten is going to cancel Northwestern's game versus Illinois now to make sure that Wildcats have the same level playing field of a bye week before the championship game, right? They aren't just going to change the rules for Ohio State and give them the luxury of a bye week, are they? If you asked Ryan Day, would you like to play a game this week? Do you know what Ryan Day would say? Yes. Whoever it is, sign me up. Yes, I would like to play a game because Ohio State needs the reps. This is not a this is not a luxury. This is Ohio State not getting to play a game. They would like to play a game. They would love to have it be Michigan, but they would have loved to play just about anyone this week. They would have loved for Maryland to have said yes to the I two. Can they, you know, scrap the Rutgers game, have Maryland come to Columbus and play Ohio State instead? If the Big Ten offered Northwestern the chance to not play Illinois and Northwestern to have the bye week and Illinois to come play Ohio State to make up the game that didn't get played a couple of weeks ago, do you know what Ohio State would have said? Yes, because Ohio State wants to play a game. This is not. The Big Ten bending over backwards. If the Big Ten wanted to bend over backwards, they could have just told Rutgers to go pound sand and told Maryland, sorry, get on a plane, go to Columbus. That would have been a perfectly viable option. It would have helped Ohio State a lot more than not Ohio State not playing a game this week. But that that requires the kind of, you know, like second order thinking that is just simply not present from many on Twitter.com. Very many. Uh, so Ryan Day released a statement just a, a few minutes ago, and I'll just read it here. Uh, on behalf of Ohio State University, the players, all those associated with the football program and our fans, I'd like to tell the haters to suck on it. No, Tom, that's is that right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, just, I was waiting for a reaction from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. So on behalf of the Ohio State University, the players, all those associated with the football program and our fans, I am appreciative of our Big Ten Conference colleagues for reconsidering the six-game requirement to qualify for the Big Ten Championship game. A lot of changes have happened since that recommendation was put in place. I know making this decision was not easy, and I am thankful for the opportunity of our players, the opportunity our players will now have to play in Indianapolis as an undefeated East Division champion. So, good news is Ohio State has accepted the Big Ten's decision to uh, become their Big Ten East champions. And now we just uh, we we watch other football teams play during Michigan Saturday. I I don't know. It's going to be very hard to watch these games and. And be like, you know, so I'm glad, sure, I'm glad I ha- I'm free to watch football while the entire time I'm thinking that you know, they should be playing Michigan right now. But it is what it is. Ohio State accepts their fate. Michigan will we'll see what happens to them, Tom. Hopefully they get back on the field next week. And uh, I don't know who they would play. And it doesn't really matter at this point because their season, they can't possibly have a good season now because they can't beat Ohio State. But as, as I did say on, on a YouTube show today, people complaining about Jim Harbaugh and, and the record. Michigan has four losses this year. That's a typical Jim Harbaugh season. You guys, people, people need to relax and get that extension signed after the season here. But, Tom, are you okay with, the, with no, no game today, no game this week, rather? Is this, is this anything that uh, – is this harmful for the, for the Buckeyes? Is it helpful? I – it's just it's unfortunate i don't think it's i don't think it's helpful no it's definitely not helpful and and ohio state would rather i mean there was at one point the idea that ohio university was available this week so maybe they could play ohio university or maybe 
you know, maybe they could just tell Rutgers to go, uh, go, go, go take, go, go take the weekend off here, go, go buy yourself something pretty and, and uh, have Maryland come up and play or that, you know, when, when Purdue shut down practices, like, Hey, that was the real easy, clean solution was, okay, let's have Indiana come back and play again. None of those worked out for various reasons. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is far from ideal for Ohio state. Like they, they need more reps. They need another, they need another week worth of game reps. Now they're not going to have them. So now you're potentially going into college football playoff with teams having 11 games worth of reps and Ohio state having like six. That's not great. You are, you're in mid October form, not end of season form. That's that. that I mean, that's, that's going to be a handicap going into the college football playoff. There's no, no two ways around that. And, you know, the, the other side of that as well. Okay. They've had fewer opportunities to get hurt. They've had fewer, you know, they've had to go through less of their playbook. Okay. I mean, that's, that's fine. But, you know, I mean, Ryan Day and the team would rather have played. And that's like, I'm not guessing. I'm, I'm telling you that is a fact. Ryan Day and the team would rather have played this weekend. And I personally would rather have had a game to cover, whether that was Michigan or Ohio University or, <laughs> or, or you know, Maryland or Indiana part two, like, yep, I would, I would take any of those right now over not having a game to cover this weekend. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it can get spun as, oh, look at this wonderful favor the Big Ten did for, Michigan, for Ohio State, but Ohio State, I can assure you, does not view it that way. No, and it's not like anybody needs 10 days to prepare for Northwestern. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> two and a half days tops for the offense three days maybe for the defense and you could combine those and get that done in three days. And I, I Buckeye fans are upset with the big 10 and there's plenty of reasons to be upset with the big 10. I, them not getting a game this week. I, again, I know it's not the big 10's fault per se that a game couldn't happen. They're not just going to take a week from a game, take a, a, a game from a team or take a rivalry game from a team and just, make them make somebody go play Ohio state. That's not the way they've really ever operated. And uh, it's not a surprise that they didn't operate this that way this time, because they didn't need to, they could just be like, you know what? We don't need to, you don't need a six game. Five games is plenty. And for the people saying Ohio state should just play somebody and let the big 10 deal with it. That is never going to happen. Ohio State is never going to do something that the Big Ten opposes. That's not how the Big Ten works. That's not how, how Ohio State works. And there are too many millions of dollars, too many media rights involved. You can't really go against the Big Ten once you've signed your, I don't know, does, does a school sign its name on a dotted line on a contract? I'm not exactly sure how that works, but their media rights are given to the Big Ten. Yeah, go ahead. Brutus has to do it. Brutus, Brutus is the yes. one who actually Brutus. signs that. Yeah. Just. And so once Brutus signs it or a uh, Buckeye guy, who knows who's to say, <laughs> uh, but you can't just start changing the rules, even though the big, the big 10 can change certain rules, but you just can't, you know, let's just go to Texas A&M. It's not, it reminds me of um, like unsanctioned wrestling matches from the seventies and the eighties, you know, and it's like, it's all fake, but it's unsanctioned. And, yeah, there there are there are no unsanctioned football games in college football. Uh, even BYU and Coastal Carolina totally sanctioned, totally sanctioned. You know, uh, and Ohio State w- wouldn't be going against wouldn't go against something the Big Ten wouldn't want them to do. And so th- there's that's never going to happen, Tom. Uh, also, th- this is not something that would cause Ohio State to want to leave the conference either. No, and and that's something you've seen floating around Twitter a bunch as well, which is okay. Well, the 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 Big Ten has done it again, and this is the last straw. And Ohio State should just go independent. It's like, well, if that does happen at some point in the distant future, Ohio State leaving the Big Ten is probably predicated on some massive shift, like like continental shift of the entire level of SBS, where you know you, you're you've got. Ohio State and Michigan and Notre Dame and Georgia and Florida and Alabama and Texas and Oklahoma, like forming some super conference or something like that. Like that's the level of change that would probably have to happen. I mean, there's been that idea that, you know, you form the 24 team, like mega super 
Death Star conference. And that's something that's been floating around for literally decades. And you know how close it's come to happening? Well, some people talked about it online and that's about it. Like it's not, uh, that, that is not something that there's ever been like, uh, you know, the, the ADs from all of those schools have been like sitting down and having like the Yalta conference about forming this. Like, no, that's not, it's not going to happen. And that's the kind of thing that it would take. Like this is, there's too much money at stake. There's, there's, a, there's billions and billions of dollars of research money and all that kind of stuff that's tied into being a member of the big 10. Um, and, and the when you know if and when ohio state leaves the big 10 which i am not anticipating is going to happen anytime for decades 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 the reason behind it will be something other than i'm mad about a football thing like that is not what's going to cause ohio state to leave the big 10 so like it, it's a great idea and it's really fun to think about ohio state playing an independent schedule like it was not going to happen this summer when they canceled it was not going to happen now it is not going to happen unless there is a complete fundamental shift in the sport of football. It's not impossible for that to happen, but it's not going to be because they're mad about something about football that happened two days ago. And the fundamental shift that will happen first is basically all of the, the major conferences moving in unison. So that's still not Ohio State moving against any type of tide. They're going to be moving with the Big Ten and, and whatever, and it's a 16-team Big Ten, and there's really no reason for Ohio State at this point to move anywhere because they are cashing in. The, the Big Ten gets the most money every year. Ohio State gets a very uh, good share of that. The Buckeyes are winning the Big Ten. They are always contending in the Big Ten, so uh, there's no reason to change that when you make the playoffs half the time or whatever and th that's also a plus and really it's like uh when you when you like your neighborhood and it's like yeah i'd like to move but you really don't know what your neighbors are going to end up like ohio state knows their neighbors they can they can deal with it you move and you don't exactly know what you're going to get yourself into and, and ohio state is in a comfortable place right now where the uh the rest of the neighborhood is trying to keep up with them and so and it's not like they're resting on their laurels either. They're still doing what they can to be better than everybody else. And right now it's working. So as long as you're better than everybody else in your conference, as long as you're running the HOA, no reason to leave. And uh, so I, it, it would be interesting to see what kind of situation would make them leave the Big Ten. Uh, it's, it would be hard to imagine a situation like that because you wouldn't think the other conf the other teams in the conference would even allow something like that. Like, I, I don't, it would almost be like, um, one person just becomes evil and just takes over. And, and, you know, you've got like Darth Vader leading this, uh, the big 10 and, and there's no, there's no rhyme or reason for it a situation that would arise to where Ohio state would feel like they have to leave. And then if for some reason they did, everybody else in the conference is going to be like, please don't go because if you go, we'll die. You know, and like we need you here. Yeah, it's, it's like stripe. You can't go. All the plants will die. It's a, you can't, you can't leave. And, and you know, this is, this is one of these things where even in this unusual year with a whole bunch of unprecedented circumstances, the Big Ten has not actually cost Ohio State anything yet. I mean, that's that's worth mentioning. They still have a chance to play for the Big Ten championship. They don't get to play Michigan. That's not really on the Big Ten. I mean, it's sort of on the Big Ten for not sticking with the original schedule, but it's not directly on the Big Ten. The Big Ten has not cost them a college football playoff berth yet. It's possible that some scenario plays out where they don't get in, but it hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> and in a typical year, they haven't had any issues making the big in the college football playoff, winning the Big Ten in the big 10, like they, they win the conference most years. They are at least in the college football playoffs uh, uh, conversation most years. They get in as often as they don't at this point, there's really no reason for them to leave for football purposes. And again, they're not going to leave for football purposes. So this is a purely academic conversation anyway, because the actual conversation is academics, which, Hey, 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 look what we just did there. So yeah, no, it's, it's not going to happen. And, you know, I mean, all the, all the reasons that you, you laid out there that, you know, they, they are, they're kind of the big dog on the block. They're, they're, 
you know, they kind of get their way with everything. There's no, there's no real reason to leave. It's, it's the same reason I'm not going anywhere or leaving this podcast. Hmm. Hmm. Now, now that you mentioned it being like academic, I, I can kind of see a scenario where Ohio state would leave or a team would leave and it would be, it would come down to something like masks versus no masks. And Ohio state would be like, we will not be part of a mask conference. And it, we, you know, everything just devolves from there and it will be terribly fun. Tom, I can't wait. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Tom, let's talk about some good news instead. Okay. Unless you want to continue on this, this down. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to think what's the good news. What's what, what good news do you have to share? Uh, tough Borland and Josh Proctor are back at practice mm, that on is good Wednesday. News. Ohio state tweeted out some photos and those two were in there and so uh, it looks like they will be back for the Big Ten championship game because even if this was just their week of ramping back up, there's no game this week, so they won't miss any more games, and they'll be back in the lineup on uh, Saturday, December 19th, Tom. Is that right so far? Correct, yes. And so we'll see what, what Ohio State has in store with their defense. I thought Baron Browning did a great job in place of Tough Borland. The, uh, Ronnie Hickman did well in place of Josh Proctor and Marcus Hooker maybe maybe saved his job for another week because we thought for sure, or at least I did, that there was going to be some movement there. But with everybody, with, with so many COVID uh, outages, there was no real way to move, I guess, move him and put somebody else back there at this point, even though it was just Michigan State. But uh, I guess that's Maybe that's the the only benefit of missing this game is that nobody else misses time, even though, Tom, by nobody else missing time, everybody else has missed time this week because (laughs) there is no game. But having Tough Borland back is good, obviously. Josh Proctor, they can get him in there and see what they want to do with that. It's just too bad that they, you know, I would have loved to have seen Maryland this week because I still think that secondary needs more work. And the Maryland passing game would have given them that. Rutgers, I, they don't need eight games, man. They don't. They, that's, a, that's at least seven more Rutgers name, games than anyone needs. Thank you. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it, it, this, is, this would have been, I mean, this would have been a really important week for them to get because, I mean, you mentioned guys who are back at practice today. There are people that we were told were probably contact trace versus uh, people who had actually popped a, a positive test. Those guys all would have been back. So, I mean, and, and you just, you want to get all these guys reps. You want to get, you want to keep building, <clears throat> you want to keep building things up. You want to keep getting, getting more kind of together and gelled together as a team and, and sort of figuring out what you got. You still, I mean, we're, we're going into the big 10 championship game week now. And I don't think Ohio state necessarily knows what they have everywhere on the field. I think they have a better sense than they did a few weeks ago, but normally by the end of the season, it's like, all right. This is what, you know, this is what they have in all these different spots. And, you know, these guys are guys who they can play. These guys are guys who they really should not play unless there's a real emergency. And this year it's just like, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, these guys are better than they were a few weeks ago. So I guess that's probably okay. You want to have better than, I guess that's probably okay. When two games from now, you're probably playing Alabama or Clemson or Notre Dame or Florida or whoever. I mean, that that's not great. You don't, you don't want to. You don't want to have a lot of question marks this time of year. You you want periods, maybe some exclamation points. Question marks are a problem because question marks get you beat. And there are some question marks. And, you know, not again, it, all the teams that we just talked about, all the other kind of playoff contenders at this point have more have more games under their belt. So they probably have more answers than Ohio State does, which again goes back to this is why it is not a favor to Ohio State to not play a game this week. They want to play a game. They really want to play Michigan, but they want to play someone. This is not a favor to Ohio State to not play. So that's, uh, I, I, I think, I don't think that has edged out the, uh, you know, actually, this is a huge disservice to Indiana uh, for the dumbest take. Um, there was, I think my favorite, my favorite one today was, that you can't just assume that Ohio State was going to beat 
whoever they played in the last game because i mean there was the purdue 2018 game it's like well okay under the existing rules if they had played illinois and lost that would have gotten them in the championship game because they had the tiebreaker for indiana so literally all it took was one other game getting played even if they lost they would have gotten in the big 10 championship game like this is not some crazy favor this is this is like paperwork this is this is like a paperwork snafu not not like oh look they're sliding in the side door <sighs> serenity now tony serenity now <laughs> I, I i'm confused why it's always just it's only just ohio state where they're like looking at the losses from past years and we can look at indiana losses there, there's a lot to look at over the years i had a noted i saw a notre dame fan on tuesday talking about how previous seasons should keep Ohio State out. It's like, oh, are you God. familiar with Notre Dame's postseason record the last quarter century in major games, like BCS games, New Year's Six games, college football playoff games? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a zero, and then there's a dash, and then there's a big number after that. Yeah, And they're not close. It's like, oh, did they lose by a small double-digit number or a big double-digit number? What excitement. And the thing I'm is, not what, sure that's the conversation yeah. you want to have. And okay, when, it's a small, <laughs> yeah, when it's a small di double digit number, that's just because the other team let off the gas, like Ohio State has done with them. Oh, man. Uh, boy, that, that's shaking me to my core when you've got Notre Dame fans in there saying, hey, look at Ohio State's postseason, or, or you know, they'll look at their big games because Notre Dame, I mean, it would be like Oklahoma fans doing it. Like, Ohio State always chokes in the playoffs. They shouldn't get in. It's, Aren't you? Don't I know you from somewhere? <laughs> like you might know me from such playoff games as you. You may remember me from such drubbings as yes. Yeah, uh, but and it, it's so it's so disappointing because normally fans from Notre Dame and and Oklahoma are so intelligent and so reasoned. Mm. Boomer. <laughs> so yeah, and. Of of the doomsday scenario, Tom. While I shift gears here, because we actually have no um, path or roadway. <laughs> of the doomsday scenario of Florida beating Alabama and Notre Dame losing to Clemson, which of those four teams gets left out for Ohio State? I think the clear answer. You know, in the Florida beats Alabama, Notre Dame loses to Clemson. I think the easiest possible answer is Notre Dame, especially if it's 10 points, 14 points, because I, I, the committee has just kind of not really acknowledged this yet, but they're kind of double counting that game where it's like, well, it doesn't really count for, for Clemson because they're missing so many key players, but it's this incredible win for Notre Dame. Well, they're missing a bunch of key players. It was this incredible win for Notre Dame. And it's like, okay, well, they're, they're getting SEC credit here where it's like, well, that's both a quality win and a quality loss. So it's really like when you add it up, it really looks like more like 1.75 wins in the standings. Like you're docking Notre, you're docking Clemson a little bit because because they did lose, but it's like basically a win. It's like, well, you, you have to allocate that win you know, it can only add up to one. It cannot add up to 1.75 wins. This is not how wins work. So if you want to call it 50-50 or 60-40, that's fine. But then it's not like, well, this is, this is the decisive final word on the matter. Like, well, they beat Clemson. Like, well, okay. And then if Clemson is full, you know, full go in the ACC championship game and comes out and beats them 42 to 28, like, well... What, what have we learned? Maybe Notre Dame isn't quite as good when they actually have to play a full go playoff team. Because it wasn't just Trevor Lawrence. They had a couple big defensive yeah. players missing in that game too. Several starters. So, okay, if all of a sudden they're off, the Notre Dame offense doesn't look quite as good when they're not playing at home against a shorthanded team, like, well, what, what does that mean? Does Notre Dame still get the benefit of the doubt? I don't, I don't know that they do. I mean, that, there are people making that, this really decisive, like, if this happens, if these things, these two thing, results happen, Ohio State is definitely out. And these are generally the same people who are telling you that the, the Big Ten's decision on uh, Wednesday to, you know, are, are, you know has, has cheapened, the, cheapened the game and it's, it really should be held against Ohio State when um, 
I mean, who, who do you have in the uh, Notre Dame Wake Forest game and Clemson Florida State game this weekend? Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. The ACC canceled those once they realized it would just be a detriment to their two playoff contending teams. Yeah, and it does also matter how those games are won, including the Big Ten championship game. If Ohio mm-hmm. State throws in a 59 nothing, that may trump a, a one point decision in the ACC championship game for Clemson. And maybe, maybe Notre Dame's lone loss being by one isn't enough, but. If it's a close loss for for Notre Dame, that's that's going to be a very 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 tough decision for the committee. But if they are comparing a Big Ten champion Ohio State and a non big non ACC champion Notre Dame, Ohio State has that extra you know that, that conference championship to um, trump them a little bit, unless Notre Dame's wins against North Carolina and Miami and Clemson. And they've got more quality wins than Ohio State, more ranked wins. I don't know. Ohio State's lone ranked win would be, well, they'd have two, Indiana and Northwestern. Of course, the committee has uh, refused to move Northwestern up because they don't have any wins over top 25 teams, but that hasn't stopped them from keeping Georgia in the top 10, despite having no wins over current top 25 teams. But, Tom, we're not here to talk about Georgia and. uh, and the, the college football playoff committee. Sir, apparently you are unfamiliar with the concept of quality losses because they have lost to some <laughs> extremely good teams. And no, the games weren't particularly competitive, but... But they were losses. They did play them, yes. which is really all that matters. Yeah, how would you like uh, Missouri sneaking in there at the end? Uh, five okay. and three Missouri. So, so um, by the way, I, I just checked, and Notre Dame did not play Miami this year. Oh, I thought. okay. There you I, go. I, I, I was pretty sure they had not. Yeah, Clemson did. <clears throat> Here's the murderer's row that Notre Dame has gone through. Duke, which is, oh, let's look this up. Duke, <laughs> they, 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 they beat Duke at home by 14 points. Duke is bad. Duke, no spoilers. Sorry. Duke Sorry. is two and eight. Two and eight. Uh, then they beat USF. South Florida, which is literally one of the worst teams in all of FBS. And then they beat Florida State by 16 points. We're trailing in the second quarter of that game. Florida State, absolute hot garbage this year. They beat Louisville. They absolutely destroyed Louisville 12 to 7. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they won at Pitt, 45-3. Okay. You you, you have defeated unranked Pitt in an impressive fashion. There's one. Uh, At Georgia Tech, who has been terrible, uh, 31-13. Beat Clemson in double overtime without its quarterback and multiple defensive starters. I feel like the double overtime gets overlooked a little bit there as well. Against a true freshman uh, quarterback. Against a true freshman quarterback. At Boston College, one by 14. Boston College has been fine. Like Boston College is arguably the third best win on this schedule. And Boston College is like, yeah, they're 500 teams. And, and they're they got fine. blown out this past week uh, against Virginia, I believe. Yes, they did. They did. Yes. And at North Carolina, they won 31 17. Like that's. That's fine. That's a good win. Good win. Two touchdowns over the number 19 team in the country. And then uh, Syracuse, uh, they were they won 45-21. Number one, Syracuse is a dumpster fire this year. Number two, that game was 10-7 to Notre Dame right before half, before Syracuse gave up a terrible touchdown right before the half. I mean, you can you can hold a bad half against against Indiana or against Ohio State if you want to, but then you have to hold the bad half against Florida State the bad game against Louisville, the bad half against Syracuse. Like those are all teams that are substantially worse than Indiana. Like there's a decent case that Syracuse is worse than anyone Ohio state has played. There's a decent chance that Louisville is worse than most of the teams Ohio state has played. If Ohio state had won 12 to seven against someone like you'd still be hearing about it. You would still be hearing about it. And it's like, well, Notre Dame is 10 and zero. it's like, well, okay. Duke USF, Florida state, Louisville, Georgia Tech, Syracuse, that's six that are just awful this year. Awful. And it's like, okay, Pitt at Georgia, I mean, Pitt at Boston College, they're both like fine. It's like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're fine, but Illinois, those are like, that's like Illinois. Right. Yeah. There's just, there, there's a bunch of, I mean, if you're, if you're going to give them a lot of credit for uh, Pitt, like, okay, that's, you know, that's like Penn State this year. I'm like, yeah, fine. It's all right. I mean, it's not fantastic, but do they have they do they have a win on there outside of the two big ones? 
I mean, at Pitt, is that any more or less impressive than winning at Michigan State 52 to 12? Yep. I don't think so. So, yeah, I, 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 I do not quite understand the rush to put Notre Dame in there based on, you know, I mean, Brian, Brian Kelly wants to tell you they've played a full Big Ten season. It's like, well, you play more than, you know, and in, in a full Big Ten season, you generally play more than two teams that are kind of decent. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very, that's, that's the schedule everybody ripped on before the season like talking about how terrible the ACC is and uh, Notre Dame has played most of those teams. And then you look at the rankings, you've got Notre Dame, you've got Clemson, you've got Miami, but the thing is like Notre Dame doesn't play Notre Dame. So, <laughs> you know, take out that number three team or number two team or whatever, because that's, that's them. So they're not playing that team. Uh, yeah. I, they are clearly the most likely to be bumped out if they do lose at this point, it seems like a foregone conclusion. If, Florida were to win, there's no way they're going to leave Alabama out. Mm-hmm. Um, they may not and, even and drop And rightfully, Alabama. rightfully so. Alabama, you know, Alabama deserves to be in. Alabama has much better wins than probably anyone else on the on the uh, you know that we're that we're talking about here. You know, and and Alabama deserves to be in. And they've looked good all year long. And exactly, they they've looked good. And you know, everyone kind of points to the Ole Miss game. It's like, well, that was a while ago, and that okay, that's one. And then what? Like. I mean, they're, they're beatable. This is not an invincible Alabama team, but they've looked pretty good. And, you know, you, you get the one weird crappy game out of the way early in the year. And then if you sort of look, start looking like the Death Star towards the end of the year, it's like, okay, well, in a, in a pandemic year, I, I, think, I think you get shown a little bit of grace for the one bad one. No, I, I would agree with that. Uh, is anybody, like, I don't think anybody's going to sneak in. Texas A&M is just... They're kind of, you know, they're just stuck. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They can't do anything unless, um, you know, of course, if, if Alabama wins and then Texas A&M is like, compare us to Ohio State and Ohio State is like, well, we've got, we've got our uh, Big Ten championship here. So that kind of, you, know, you don't even have a division championship. The, the way Texas A&M gets in is if Ohio State loses to Northwestern, mm-hmm. that's, that's probably yeah. what it takes because it's just, you know, you, you, this was, I mean. Again, this was a banner day for intellectualism online, but there was some Texas A&M fan who admittedly was a Texas A&M fan who had like 150 followers who like a bunch of like significant people were quote tweeting that it was just like, what, why are you, why are you bringing this dude to anyone's attention? But, you know, the graphic was like all these things. Well, if you look at the strength of schedule, uh, Texas A&M, it, it, the decision is clear. It's like, um, you forgot the loss column because there was, <laughs> you also forgot the loss by four touchdowns column. Yeah. Like that, that's, that's that the relevant the data column. Column. That, Because it has been for Ohio State. That's mm-hmm. the first column is right. lost by yeah. how much. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, Alabama is not 2018 Purdue. It's not 2017 Iowa. But mm-hmm. if you, if you have lost by four touchdowns at home, at home to one of the playoff teams that suggests to me that you may not be competitive in a playoff game and the college football playoff committee would really like some competitive playoff games this year so that people keep watching them past the second quarter they don't want the typical notre dame effort in the playoff they do not want the typical oklahoma game in the playoff like they want competitive playoff games they're not putting 2015 michigan state in this year sorry like nope um, yeah, it, it, God. Yeah, I saw Jimbo today say he, he's in favor of an 18 playoff, and I was thinking, yeah, I bet you are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're in Nick Saban's division, you know, for another couple of years before Nick Saban retires. But of course, you are in favor of an 18 playoff, and I would say, and I, I think every coach in the SEC is, except for maybe Nick Saban. Well, and and uh, boy, we're we are just hitting all the we're playing all the hits today. I'm gonna scroll back uh, nine hours from this particular moment. College sports on Sirius XM <clears throat> tweet would Aggie football head coach Jimbo Fisher be willing to play Ohio State this weekend? And the pull quote that they've pulled from this 30 second clip is it doesn't bother me to play them. I'd love to play them. So does that suggest to you that is answering the question of whether he'd like to play them this weekend? You would I, think so. But friends, it did not. In no. fact, the, the even even within the context of the short clip, he says he doesn't want to play Ohio State this weekend because it's not enough time. It will be a weird, sloppy game. It won't be a good measure of the two teams. He would like to play them sometime, but he does not want to play them this weekend. It's like, well, I'm not sure you really represented that very well. But part of the problem was everyone just looks at the tweet 
looks mm-hmm. at the pull quote, doesn't bother to listen to the 30 seconds of audio and goes, oh, Ohio State's scared. Ohio State's scared. They don't want none of this smoke from Jimbo. Okay. All right. Good. 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 We're all doing, we're all doing great. Yes. Yeah. Smoke from Jimbo. I, <laughs> there, there's, you know, they say where, where there's smoke, there's fire. I, I no, not always. <laughs> if there's smoke from Jimbo it, right now, it's just um, steam, maybe. You know, there, there's uh, some boiling water or something. There, there's no actual flames where he is right now. But and can we go back for one moment to Notre Dame's schedule again? I just want to bring this up. <laughs> no, okay, Louisville. We we talked about Duke. Duke yeah. has two wins. Duke's two wins are over Syracuse, which is one of Notre Dame's victor uh, victims, and Charlotte. So Duke has zero wins outside of the Notre Dame cinematic universe. Okay, Louisville has beaten Western Kentucky and Florida State, and Syracuse. So they have no ACC wins outside of the Notre Dame Cinematic Universe. Florida State has beaten Jacksonville State, beaten really? North Carolina, which is the only good yeah. win, that, that the second best win that Notre Dame has, and that's it. End of list. They have zero wins outside of the Notre Dame Cinematic Universe. Syracuse has one win. It is against Georgia Tech. They have zero wins outside of the Notre Dame Cinematic Universe. Like, what... <laughs> The only reason any of these teams have any wins is because they've gotten to play each other. <laughs> That's it. Georgia Tech has beaten Florida State. They have beaten Louisville. And they have beaten Duke. They have zero wins outside of the Notre Dame Cinematic Universe. What are we doing? This is That's half their schedule. And it's like they haven't beaten anyone other than the other crappy teams that Notre Dame has played. And literally someone has to win those games. That's how the yeah. rules work. And that win over Clemson just keeps them there, and it just keeps them there and keeps them there until it won't. But you've you've made a very very solid case, and I and I'm on board now that with a Clemson win, Notre Dame drops back, provided it's not like oh hail mary, Clemson wins at the end, and people are like yeah that doesn't really count as a loss for Notre Dame, and then other people will have to remind them, hey Clemson is an ACC team, not an SEC team. Notre Dame losing on a Hail Mary would have to get extra points for irony. So, <laughs> and then, uh, and then Ohio State sweeps in there. And Notre Dame goes to, uh, I don't know, go play, play Cincinnati, you know, the, the Brian Kelly Bowl in, somewhere in, in the New Year's Six or Coastal Carolina. Who knows? That would be a, an interesting game where the, you just, you're so close to the playoffs and then you don't get in. And then, uh, you just tank in a bowl game. And that's where you get the SEC excuse. They, they didn't want to be there. That's why the SEC <laughs> lost. That's why Notre Dame lost. They didn't want to be in that bowl game. You don't understand what it's like to be a champion and not to be in that final ring. They they just didn't want to be there. And that's why they lost. And yeah, that's it. You know, you're right though. Every, some, there has to be a win. There has to be a win in uh, those bowl games. Has to be a win in the ACC. It's just that that, that conference is. And knowing knowing that the Big Ten is terrible this year as well, but at least people talk about how terrible the Big Ten is. When people are talking about the ACC, it's it's just having Notre Dame in there. If Notre Dame was in the Big Ten this year, I think then the Big Ten would be getting more credit, clearly, but it, they wouldn't be getting ripped as much uh, because that, it's just having that one extra team in there lifts lifts the 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 appearance of of quality and it, it's not just an appearance it is actual quality as well and so i guess my message would be big 10 fans don't be upset or high state fans don't be upset at the big 10 be mad at james franklin and penn state be mad at jim harbaugh in michigan be mad at tom allen for losing uh, to ohio state i guess maybe maybe not that one but um yeah there are so many bad teams in the acc that are like more along the lines of AAC teams. That, that's that's their level. And then you, you just, yes, great job playing 10, 11 games this year, Notre Dame, but you've been playing whack-a-mole with these dudes and it, it's you're undefeated and you've got two quality wins and that's great. You better make it three though. There are five teams that have fewer than four wins in the ACC, ACC this year. Would you like to guess total wins? Not just ACC wins, total wins. Would you like to guess how many of those five teams Notre Dame has played this year? Five? 
Good job, Tony. You, <laughs> you have won. You win the pony. Good job. Yeah. And, and uh, they did not play the third best team, Miami. They did not play the fourth best team, NC State. I, I mean, like, I mean, it's fine. Like, you can acknowledge that. No one has any problem acknowledging that Ohio State has played a bunch of kind of butt teams in the Big Ten this year. Like, that's, that's okay. You can, you can acknowledge that. But it, it's, not like, it's not like Notre Dame has, like, blown a bunch of these teams out either. But, you know, the, the, these, things, these things don't get discussed for some reason. Yeah, Indiana, North Carolina, if you want to compare those two, that, you know, those wins equate. It's that Clemson win that separates Notre Dame, but just all of the other teams on that schedule that if, if Ohio State had looked that poorly against, there would be repercussions mm-hmm. and people would be going back to them. Nobody talks about the rest of Notre Dame's wins. They only talk about Clemson and they only talk about North Carolina. They may throw in the pit game just because it looks good, but I don't know that I've heard anybody mention the 12 to 7 Louisville game from the committee at all uh, during this entire process and, or, or any of the other uh, close, ugly wins. Uh, you know, if it was the, the SEC, that's just gritty. You know, the, that's just how tough it is in the SEC. That's not the case for these bad ACC teams. This is Notre Dame playing, perhaps playing down to the level of the competition, but that's not a good sign either. And it's not like they're doing it with trestle ball. It's just their lack of, uh, you know, putting it all together for those particular games. Tom, I don't really have anything else today. Do you have anything that we should touch on? Is are we forgetting anything? Anything we need to tie up, uh, mention, deal with? Again, no Michigan game this week. Sorry, guys. That's uh, it's not my fault. That was Tom's doing. Yeah, apologies. Uh, that was that was on me. Should not have should not have gone into Schmeckler Hall and sneezed on all the stuff. That that's that's I I apologize. Very sorry. No, I think I think we're good. I think we've uh, addressed. I'm just kind of scrolling through my timeline right now to see if we have addressed all of the stupidity. But scrolling think, through your timeline, see if there's any witty tweets to throw out to the people. <laughs> no, I think I'm just I'm just looking to see if there's any uh, anyone else that has uh, done a dumb thing today. I think I think we've hit most of them. It's fine. We're, we're good. If you check my timeline. I may have tweeted something stupid. I'm just going to read one. From, I'm going to read one from Brett McMurphy. Oh yes. Basically, Big Ten is faced with this: Does it value college football playoff money slash opportunity for Ohio State to win national title over principles slash established rules? I love that one. I love um, established no, rules. Sh- 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 <laughs> here comes the balance. Here comes the balance. <laughs> there is no right or wrong answer. Just what they want to do. I'm not judging. I'm just saying you'd be violating your principles and established yes. rules. If you went back on something you established three months ago to respect the on-field results of a game where if a team had had one, uh, no, 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 we're done. We're done. That's it. We're, we're, we're out of show. Yeah. McMurphy is basically like, you know, this is what they could do or, or they could totally prostitute themselves. Not that there's anything wrong with prostituting yourself. It's just, you know, some people, that's what they do. And I'm not judging one way or the other. And yeah, a lot of people are having uh, fun with what the Big Ten has chosen to do. And they were going to, as you said, Tom, at the start, they were going to do that regardless because that is the job of the, uh, the, the columnists. It's to tweet and to column. And uh, regardless of what happens, they have to do that. It's like uh, you're, you're unloading. Uh, you, you work on a loading dock. And no matter what, what what comes into that dock, you're going to be unloading it, whether it's a bunch of Barbies or it's uh, – what, what, what else is there other than Barbies? Medicines. I can't, I can't, think, I can't think of a thing. <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> whether you're unloading medicine or Barbies, whichever of those two things that it could possibly be in this entire world, you, you got to do it. And it's just the, the same with the columnists and the, the Big Ten choosing to – uh, right or wrong or wrong or right and who's to say which they did did they wrong or right or did they right or wrong i'm not judging them tom but i will in my column <laughs> the only good column ever is the tweets that are just something incredibly stupid and then my column colon and no link <laughs> which every once in a while you'll tweet one of those out and someone's like you forgot the link it's like mm, not sure you're getting no I'm, I- you know, Tom, we better go before we start talking about people not getting stuff on Twitter um, because there, there's a lot there. But not from our listeners. No. 
I, I only have problem with problems with goofy people in my mentions when you retweet me. I've noticed. I think my I think my followers are extremely intelligent, but every once in a while I get that Tony Gerdeman retweet and it's like, oh no. Here they come. <laughs> you 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 can like start seeing responses and, and without even knowing that I've retweeted you, you're thinking, this doesn't look like my traffic. This is That's this not... is traffic from the wrong part of town. No, this is yes, this is yes. <laughs> They yeah. have crossed from the wrong side of the tracks over into my timeline. Yeah. What I also don't like is people who call me chief mm. on Twitter. Mm. Well, that's, I got to tell you, that's a little bit on you. Now I refuse to blame myself for things that I have done or things that happened to me. That is never my fault, regardless of whether or not I have caused it. So Tom, I think that'll do it. Who's on the, the morning scoop tomorrow. Oh, I got to figure that out. That's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> It's 7 p.m. We got time. I was just sitting here as you were wrapping up the show thinking, hmm, we're going to have in the morning scoop tomorrow. Well, uh, we'll see. I, I generally I generally wait for kind of the news of the day mm -hmm. to break and go, sure. OK, well, here's the person I like. I was sure I was going to have Nevada on to, to have an update on, you know, here's here's what's happening. And then it seems like all the answers have already kind of been revealed. So you should you know, I don't want to try to produce the show. Have a have Mark or. Alex or Bill on talk about uh, Amaka Egbuka and his decision date coming up. That is what I kind of landed on. I think I might do that. I might, you know, do that you and a little welcome. bit of some, some of the stuff we just talked about. Yeah. Can I get a producer credit on that? It, it would <laughs> the <laughs> only ever credit that ever shows up in the show is just this do one you, episode. It's produced by. Do, do you want to host the show? You could host it if you want. No, I can't. I can't do that. I don't <laughs> like to host shows. I've, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do tonight. I've got, uh, got the loading dock. Mm -hmm. I already told you about got, that. Got, got, got to get those Barbies got a in. lot of Barbies, man. <laughs> All right. Um, Tom, I didn't know if we were going to go 20 minutes tonight, uh, mm -hmm. but we have. So T turns out we've gone uh, probably 52 minutes or so. If, That's I, all right. if I'm remembering, I, I hope it's okay. Start time. You know, it's not like we're just talking to talk because. Well, for, for the first about 45 minutes, it wasn't. <laughs> yes. Then now we're just, now I, I just don't want to go. You know, the longer I keep Tom on the show, the later he has to stay up and try to figure out what he's going to do with, with the morning show. So this turned into baby. It's cold outside remarkably quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that reference. <laughs> All right. Everyone else did. It's fine. <laughs> per usual. Uh, the joke is on me because I don't get it. And everybody laughs and that's great. It takes me back to grade school where everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just go, Tom. Uh, it's time yes. to go. Uh, thank you all for listening. Check out the BuckeyeScoop.com. Go there. There's, I promise you, it is, if you sign up, become a member, a paying member, not one of these freeloaders, a paying <laughs> member, you will uh, appreciate it. I don't know if I mentioned this a couple of days ago. We, there was one guy who signed up, and because of, of a, a Kirk Barton email blast, like, hey, come check out this uh, Nevada nugget. And so the guy signs up, and he, and he reads it. It's like, Man, you know, I, I I just signed up just to find that one thing out, and I, I don't feel like I got my my money's worth. And it's like, well, that was one day of a of a twelve uh, of a thirteen dollar monthly commitment. Just just it just means we have twenty nine more days to earn your business. And then uh, I think like for like three or four straight days there was news, and then on the fourth day he's like, "All right, you guys have earned my business." And then I retweeted, I, I responded back with a a gif of something saying you know like four days it took four days that's all it took was mm -hmm. four days for you to realize that it's it's worth the money and uh more more and more people you're seeing it on twitter there um, it's not taking that long at all but before we go can i just can i just throw this out there and let you all right just share what's ever on your heart i'm gonna read you the headline news lsu has imposed a bowl ban for this year Three and five LSU has imposed a bull ban. That's mighty sporting of them, if you ask me. <laughs> is, this, is this because of something the basketball team did? Because they refused to punish the basketball team? But LSU imposing a bull ban, three and five season, where they're terrible and they're not going anywhere and there's no reason for them to go to a bowl game and, and who would have them? The Gator oh, Bowl, man. This is, that's... Well, is Michigan imposing a bull ban too? Just just because, like, hey, 
we're not on probation. We have done nothing wrong, but we're going to put this one in the bank. Yeah, just bank one for the next wrong. time. Do we get a free probationary? You know, like you get one free probation because you have taken this ball ban. Uh, good job by Coach Ed Orgeron, Tom. And this is, uh, we'll, we'll go, but now I want to talk about Ed Orgeron and LSU and their preseason rankings because they there was a guy who voted them number one in, in the AP poll preseason. And I'll, I'll just assume it was because national champs, defending champs, that's what I do. There were, I don't know, like 15 people who had him in the, the top five, top 10. Some of those people we know, so I'm not going to rip on the guys who had them in the, between six and 10. I'll mention their names. Uh, no, I won't, but there are other people who had them in the top five. And I just want people to realize that if anybody thought that LSU was going to be in the top five this year, do not trust those people for anything regarding college football. Tom and I, not to toot our own horns, Tom and I were telling you LSU is going to be no good and they're going to fall back to earth. And they lost the two guys responsible for everything in Joe Brady and Joe Burrow. And and now and now the, the ball ban. But and even after that Mississippi State loss, there were still people who had them in the top 10. This is ridiculous. It is it is preposterous. And the AP, Tom, I don't think they should be deciding who goes to the BCS anymore. I mean, what do you think about that? Huh? It, might be, it might be your hottest take yet. <laughs> All right. People have stopped listening for about 20 minutes now. Should we go for 30? No? All I have right. to do a morning show before tomorrow morning. We should probably wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All for listening, and I mean it this time because you didn't have to, and you probably haven't been. So, thank you, and we will talk to you later. Tom is already leaving. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.